For this video, we're going to be discussing linear relationships in circles. So similarly to how in our last video we talked about how lines intersecting in a circle formed angle relationships, we also can find that when lines intersect in a circle they form special linear relationships. And these relationships are going to be different depending on the types of lines and where they intersect. So we're going to kind of split these up again into lines that intersect inside the circle. And lines that intersect inside, that's going to be two chords. So two chords have their own special relationship. And then also lines that intersect outside. And we're going to have two different examples of this. We're going to have two secants. We're also going to have a secant and a tangent. So each one of these three different sets of lines is going to have a different relationship that goes along with it. And we're going to start by talking about two chords. So when two chords intersect inside a circle, the product of the lengths of the segments of one chord equals the products of the lengths of the segment of the other chord. That might seem a little awkward in the wording, but basically what we're saying is if we look at this circle here, I have this line or this line segment AB. And in this line segment AB, I've got this segment AE and this segment EB. And then I've also got segment CE and segment CD. And what happens is if I multiply AE and EB and I multiply CE and ED, I'll get the same answer. So for example, I could make these be like, this is two, this is six, this is three, and this is four. And then if I do my multiplying, I do two times six and three times four, and I get 12 on both sides of my equal sign. So what we're saying is if, we, if our two chords intersect somewhere in the circle, the segments that they're split into, the products of those segments will be equal. So here's example one. Why don't you go ahead and copy this one down, and then we'll start the video back up. So now that you've copied this one down, we're going to go ahead and solve for x in this problem. So the first thing I want to do is I want to come up with my segments that go along with each other. If I look at this chord right here, I've got x minus 9 and 24 are my two segments. So I can say 24 times x minus 9 equals, on my other side I have x minus 5 and 21. So I can say 21 times x minus 9. So now I'm going to solve for x. 24 times x is 24x. 24 times 9 is minus 216 equals, on the other side, 21 times x is 21x, and 21 times, I'm sorry, I wrote down 9 when I should have written down 5. 21 times 5 is minus 105. I'm going to subtract 21x on both sides. At the same, side, same time, add 216 on both sides. 21 minus, or 24 minus 21 gives me 3x. These cancel, these cancel. Negative 105 plus 216 gives me 111. Divide both sides by 3. And I end up with x equals 37. So all I did is I multiplied the segments of each chord by each other, set them equal, and then solved my equation. All right, now we're going to talk about what happens when two secants intersect. So when two secants intersect at a point outside of a circle, the product of the length of one secant and its exterior segment is equal to the product of the length of the other secant and its exterior segment. Now that's kind of weird, kind of a confusing way of writing it. But here's how the way I think about it. It's the outside, so this outside part, 
times the whole thing is equal to the other outside part times the other whole thing. So in this case, if we look at that, we've got AP, that's our outside, times BP, I'm sorry, AP is our whole thing, times BP, that's our outside, equals CP, the whole thing, times DP, which is the outside. So an example for this would be like, if we said, for example, this was four, and this was five, and then we could say this was hmm, three, and this was nine, then we could say, okay, well, outside four times the whole thing, which is five plus four equals outside, which is three times the whole thing, which is nine plus three. Work that out, this is four times nine equals three times 12. 4 times 9, 36. 3 times 12, also 36. So whenever we've got two secants crossing, it's the outside times the whole equals the outside times the whole. All right, so let's take a look at an example for that. We're trying to find the value of x in this setup here. So we know this relationship exists. AE times BE so that's the whole thing times the outside equals CE times DE. Once again, outside times the whole thing. So if we plug these into an equation, BE is 4 and AE is x plus 4. Gives us that whole length right there. CE is 12. If I add 6 and 6, I get 12. And DE is 6, that's the outside part. So now I need to solve this whole thing. Distribute, 4 times x is 4x, 4, 4 times 4 is 16. 12 times 6 is 72. And then if I solve, this doesn't have it all the way solved out. Subtract 16 on both sides, I get 4x equals 56 and then divide by four on both sides, and I get x equals 14. All right, so all we're doing is setting up our equation. Outside times the whole thing equals outside times the whole thing, and solving for our missing variable. And finally, our third and final relationship is between a secant and a tangent. So in a secant and a tangent, this should say, intersect at a point outside of a circle the product of the length of the secant and its exterior segment so outside times the whole again is equal to the length of the tangent squared so once again for the secant secant is always going to be outside times the whole times the tangent squared and we can really think of the tangent squared as being outside times the whole because if you think about it the tangent only has an outside segment. So both the outside and the whole are the same thing. So it's the tangent squared. Okay, in this example, EC times ED is equal to EA squared. So we could think of this as being something like, for example, this could be, hmm, let me think of an example off the top of my head. Uh, this could be, well, this could be six. This could be four, this could be five. All right, if we think about that, we've got outside times the whole, four times four plus five equals tangent squared, six squared, four times nine equals six squared, 36 equals 36. So all we do is we set up our equation and figure it out. So let's try an example here. We're going to find the value of x in the given problem. 
So we know the following relationship exists. AE squared equals CE, the outside, or the whole thing, times BE, which is the outside. All right, so if we plug in numbers, ignore this line here. AE is 10, so 10 squared. The outside on our secant is 5. The, in, the whole thing is 3x plus 5. 10 squared gives me 100. 5 times 3x is 15x. 5 times 5 is 25. If we solve that equation, we get x is 5. Let's solve that whole thing out. 100 equals 15x plus 25. Let's track 25 on both sides. You get 75 equals 15x. Divide this entire equation by 15, and we get 5 equals x. So all we did is set up our equation and plug in the numbers that we have for the values in our equation and solved for our missing value. So I'm going to leave you with these try it problems. In each one of these, you need to use what you have learned to find the value of x in each one of these problems.